Hey, Jim Bergman here with MeasureQuick. Uh, got a couple questions, just uh, people wanted to see a little bit closer the gas service heating. So I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll start a blank project here. And cool thing is, is once you open up a project with MeasureQuick on a job site, like at your work office or wherever you're at, you can open up any project in MeasureQuick for the year with no additional fee. In other words, you know, one, one project per system, or, or sorry, one, one price per system per year unlimited number of projects so you can uh, open them up as many times as you want play around with things and you know check out the other things and there's no charge to do that ever so um, we're going to go ahead and just geotag the location this is where we want to pick the location of the equipment go ahead submit the profile is really important you want to follow this workflow in order uh, because what's happening here when we select our appliance we select our fuel type and then we're our rated input what's happening here is we are uh, setting up all the targets so when we're telling it you know it's 94 percent efficient and we're using our minimum supply gas pressure let's say five and our max supply of uh, 10 rated manifold pressure 3.5 uh, pressure switch we'll say is 1.5 that's what mine is at the house there temperature rise is 40 to 60 or sorry 70 and then our total external static pressure 0.5. These are all the targets that MeasureQuick is gonna to use to make sure that everything's in the right range and to perform some of the calculations. So once we get that entered there, we're just gonna hit the check mark and now that's done. Filter information, you know, you tap to set the date. If it's the first time you've done it, otherwise it's gonna pull up the last time you did it. The filter type, I have a 40% pleated and we're just gonna do the, the size here of uh, 16 by 25 by uh, by, by four and I do have on my system uh, two filters Oops. so we'll fix that and we'll hit submit so now this whole section here the photo documentation section is just designed so you can document any problems you find or show that you know you got a level on a thermostat there's a little info button next to each one of these and just tells you in this case you know thermostats being checked for proper installation programming penetration sealed through the wall um, you know, and it, and it can screw up the operation if you don't have the penetration sealed, uh, what we're looking for in the electrical system, uh, what we're looking for in the air distribution system. So there's information buttons on all these different photos. If you don't know what you're looking for, we're telling you what to look for. And then if you want to take a photo of something and you want to add notes, you can just click on the add notes button and add in notes on there. So that's a really uh, convenient thing to do and you should be you know, walking through and looking at everything before you really dig into it. You can add photos anytime you want to add them. Now, corrective actions is probably one of my favorite sections of the app and this is where we can um, you know say what we did on the system and each one of these has got uh, a slew of different um, things you know we're verifying wire sizes and load line voltage polarity uh, checking our ground connections and uh, they all by default are no action required but it just allows you to go through here and add in uh, any data you wanna add in so you don't have to type all this uh, kind of stuff up, right? And it really makes it a lot faster to, to go through and document your work. The whole idea behind this is that uh, you get done a lot quicker than you normally could because you're not having to write down everything. And again, this is brought up on systems. I'll scroll through that in just a second here. I just wanna skim through all these so you can sort of see uh, what's here. And if you wanna pause the video and read any of these, you can, that's what I would recommend. Uh, there and there's some of these are, are much more in depth and some of them you're going to want to make sure that you do check because they are required tests like when you're going through a, a heating thing a heating uh, inspection so let's just talk about these real quick what we broke this up into is systems and guys you need to stop thinking about the, the box you know just the furnace because the furnace is c connected to a control system which is your thermostat it's connected to an electrical system you know from the panel all the way through and you got to make sure it's on a dedicated circuit it's connected to an air distribution system, which gets the air from the furnace where it's got to go. An air filtration system to get the air clean, right? A condensate drain system to pull that moisture away. We got, you know, our indoor equipment, the physical equipment itself. We got a venting system to exhaust that vent outside. So, you know, there are things like we want to verify its size properly. It's got the proper pitch. It's verified that it's supported properly. It's terminated properly. Um, that it, it's above our snow line if we're in an area that has snow. You know, we want to look for blockages and restrictions. These are all things that you should be doing as you're doing your testing. And don't think because it's been working fine for a lot of years that it, uh, 
that the vent system may not be sized properly or something like that. We need to be looking at all those things. Our combustion air system, right? We're looking at well, where's our makeup air coming from and making sure that we have enough makeup air in the space. And this is important even when you have a 90 plus furnace because don't forget a lot of times there's a hot water tank or another atmospheric draft appliance in that same place. Our heat exchanger, uh, we're gonna do an inspection on that for cor corrosion, uh, warping, flame disruption. We're gonna maybe clean the heat exchanger. Any of these, you can your radio buttons, you can check or uncheck them. Our fuel delivery system, and I'm just uh, checking a few of these off so you guys can see how it prints out in the report. And, um, and then our, you know, verify our safety CO levels. And then we'll go through and we'll just uh, say we resolve some CAS issues, just so you can see a couple here and the system's operating okay. Now there is, on the combustion safety side, there, there, these are recommendations. So if your stack CO is over 100 uh, PPM, uh, CO air free, you, you, you really, you can allow that appliance to stay operating, but we recommend that you don't because that's a higher CO than you should see uh, um, if it's running properly. We can easily get below 100 PPM. If, uh, if it's um, got other issues in here, you can see like it has the detectable flue gas spillage um, or ambient CO levels above certain levels. Um, you know, we're gonna, again, other, other recommendations. And then there are a few that are removed from service because you have flue gas uh, of high CO levels spilling into conditioned space or you have a blockage or you have other things going on there. So you can use these at your discretion and we'll just hit submit on there. Now testing the system, a couple of things here, you'll notice right away that the gas manifold is grayed out. That's because this particular inspection is very process focused. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check for ambient CO in the air. If you're using a combustion analyzer, uh, you can, and all this is manual input also, but if you're using a combustion analyzer, you can capture these readings. We're going to check in the return, and we're going to check in the supply. Now, where does this cup stuff come from? Well, it actually comes from the uh, heat exchanger inspection that's published by AHRI, which we've linked to in the app. And this just goes through a five-part method where we're going to look for flame disturbances. Then if you go to the top here, it's uh, measure CO levels in the airstream right here. And then uh, we're going to step three here is measure steel levels in the flue pipe. And then we're going to verify proper installation and, and verify the heat exchanger. Up the top, you'll see a button for measure quick, go back. And then there's also combustion safety, and this is a BPI.org document. So you can take a look at that. And it's got the call to actions if you need uh, some information on either setting up a depressurization in the combustion and air zone, uh, spillage and assessment and CO measurement, uh, your, your, th your thresholds for CO and test results and required actions. Now this is actually designed around building science guys that are doing um, uh, inspection, but this is a really good document even for the HVAC industry. So we tied those in there also. You can just hit submit. Pressure measurements here, so this is our inlet pressure. So we'll just say we got, you know, um, let's say 7.8 inches of water column coming in. We got 3.5 on our um, on our manifold pressure. That's a 90 plus. There's no draft, but we're going to measure our 1.9 inches. Let's say on our uh, on our pressure switch, our CAS pressure would be, you know, in pascals. So maybe it's negative three pascals. Uh, return air static 0.23. Um, supply air static uh, point. We'll say two three again. When you hit submit here, it's going to calculate automatically the total external static pressure, and it'll show it calculated. So you can either enter total external, or you can enter you know any combination of them, and it'll calculate the third value. Now you'll see that that's not grayed out anymore in a gas manifold pressure. And at, at this point, um, we can we can start the uh, clock the meter, or we can skip it. Now, I'm going to skip it just temporarily so you can see how that's done, but we always recommend that you clock the meter. Now, down here at the bottom, a couple things I want to show you. You'll notice that my heat content of gas is, at, is over here is at 1065, pp, or 1065 BTUs per cubic foot. That comes from this document here, and it's a 2019 document, but it shows the average heat content of gas, and this is probably the most current co you know, document you want to have. If we look here at Ohio, let me just scroll down a little bit till we get to Ohio. You can see it's 1057, 1068, 1071, 1070, 1064, 1065. It tends to trend, you know, uh, in, in certain ranges. And uh, you're going to enter in your heat content of gas and then measure quick will hold that going forward. But this is a, an average heat content over the year 
uh, for the natural gas on there. So it is a starting point for you. You can call your utility and get it, but it's average heat content, not daily heat content and gas we're concerned with. So um, if we skip this reading and I'll hit skip and we, it's gonna, gonna get a warning message here. The, when you, when you don't clock your meter, right, you're, you, you're not verifying your input. And input is really important for 90 plus furnaces to make sure that they condense, okay? 80 pluses, it's not quite as important. You'll get a little bit of efficiency losses due to higher excess air, but on a 90 plus, especially if it's anything above 90% uh, efficient, like 94, 95, 97%, you have to get the input correct or the furnace will simply not operate at that efficiency. So you want to make sure that uh, you're clocking the meter whenever possible. But if we hit confirm there, uh, when we go to the user interface here and we go to the clock the meter, you're at the point now where you can adjust your manifold pressure. So you can see it's at 3.5, we're at 90,000. I'm going to adjust my pressure here um, just to, uh, oh, let's just take it up to 3.6 and you'll see what will happen here. When we go to the clocking the meter again, you're going to see it's going to raise the BTU input. So it, it follows the, the BTU input. These are our temperatures and pressures. So we'll go ahead and we'll get our supplier dry bulb. Let's say it's, uh, it's 130 and our uh, return air will say is 70. And when we hit the tab key again, it's gonna show us our, our, our air flows. So if we go back to uh, temperatures again, that's all our data there. And it'll show us airflow once we hit capture pressure here. And um, now it's, it's taking it back to, to 90,000 because it's assuming that you adjusted it up to get the input correct. And that's what clock in a meter does. But now if I go back to temperatures and pressures, um, I believe I'll get an airflow reading here. We'll try this again here. Temps, submit, and we'll see if we get the airflow reading. And we did not. So let me try one more thing here. And airflow CFM should, should have popped up and it didn't. We'll have to take a look at that and see what's going on there. Uh, combustion measurements, we'll get our CO. We'll just say is um, 10 parts per million. Our O2 we'll say is uh, six. Our stack temperature, combustion to air temperature, we'll say is 60 degrees. Our stack temperature, 110. Our CO air free, we'll just say is uh, 45, 46. And our excess air, we'll just say is 56%. And I'm just putting some numbers in here so we got uh, something to work with on there. And we got a point that we can start here in O2, we'll just say is 8% uh, O2, CO2. All right, these are pretty typical combustion readings. And you can see now what we do is on this user interface here is where we would start going through and just checking things. So all of our supply and return air temperatures and our airflow are in the right range. And that's why I didn't have uh, airflow is because I didn't have in the, all the pressures and temperatures yet. So again, it's very process focused. You got to make sure you get everything in. Now we have our, our clocking the meter reading here. We've got our combustion measurements here. Everything's falling in line. And then we've got our you know, gross and net efficiency. Up. So this would be a, a properly operating furnace at this point. And we'll go ahead and we'll input electrical measurements. Now incoming voltage, 120. Low voltage here, we'll just say is 24. Our flame rod microamps, we'll say is 12. Uh, thermocouple, we don't have one on here. Polarity would be in the 96 volt range. Combustion blower motor, microfarads we could read amps, you know, any of these things you want to put, whatever you put in is going to, what's going to show in a report. So if you don't put all the stuff in, it's not going to uh, pop in on the report. And uh, again, you can uh, uh, select which ones are applicable to the appliance you're working on. So now when I save the data, there's two things I can do here. One's benchmark. And if I benchmark it, it's going to, it's going to store the, um, all the profile information, the target gas pressure based upon where you left it set. Um, filter face velocity, all that information is going to be stored in there so we got it for next year. When you save the data, it's going to run an analysis on there. So when I hit view now, what this is going to do is it's going to show me a subsystem review. And in this case, everything was passing. And at subsystem review, it, it runs an analysis on the ambient CO and the return and supplier CO. So if any of those things were outside of line, it's going to automatically go to a fail. On a thermostat, this is something you can manually override. So, you know, if we go here and we, we say that there's something wrong with the thermostat, maybe it's uh, broken or whatever, we can manually override it. Electrical system, um, again, we can override this. So if, if the polarity was out of line or something like that, you could you'd have to manually override that. 
temperature air distribution system is going to automatically run a diagnostic. It's looking at the temperature rise. Is it falling in the correct range? Is the fan watt draw in the correct range? And is our total external static pressure in the correct range? Air velocity, uh, uh, we're going at the air filtration system. It's looking at velocity across your filters. So it's calculating how many feet per minute of air you have going across that filter. Again, automatic pass fail. Condensate drain system, something you'd have to look at. Pay close attention and make sure that your 90 plus is not common vented with your air conditioning drain. I'd highly recommend you don't run them together if at all possible. Um, that can lead to some other problems with, uh, with the draining properly. Indoor air equipment, again, you determine if it's pass or fail. Venting system, you determine if it's pass or fail. Fuel delivery system is an automatic pass fail. It's looking at the inlet pressure. It's looking at the manifold pressure. It's looking at the gas input to make sure all those things are in line. Uh, makeup air system, again, that's you. You determine if it's pass fail. Heat exchanger, you determine. Safety system, heating operation. Our combustion safety, we're looking at the CO air free in the stack. So anything above uh, 100 ppm or above 100 ppm is caution above 400 ppm is automatic failure then combustion efficiency we're looking at the low medium high so we'll hit submit there now when we hit share and we export this pdf um, what this does when we generate the pdf here is it brings all the readings in so you can see everything there that we have on that piece on that appliance and it also brings in all the pass fails right so this is a good good document here, Mrs. Jones. We ran a scan on your system, and these systems here you have issues with, they're failing. Uh, how would you like us to move forward on this? And then corrective actions, you know, it's looking at what did you do to the, con the control system, the electrical system, the air distribution system, filtration system. All these things are filled out so you don't have to type them in and they'll wrap on a nice report for you. And then this is a document for the homeowner to understand you know what you what you're looking for so this um, you guys should all read through this and make sure you understand you know uh, what we're looking for and measure quick and then this is again designed so you can have talking points with your homeowner so you know we tell mrs jones that her uh, air filtration system has failed right she doesn't have enough filter face velocity we can tell her look it's right here the filter face uh the, the air filter air filtration systems check for filter face velocity it's correct amount of of, of uh, filter area for the airflow and it should be between 250 and 500. And if, if you don't fix this, it's gonna result in poor indoor air quality, uh, some noise, excessive noise, high duct static pressures, poor airflow. Uh, your, your fan's gonna use a lot of power. Um, you're gonna have poor cooling. You're gonna have excessive uh, power consumption. So these are things that help to explain to the homeowner why they wanna make those corrections. And then, you know, this report can obviously, we can just email it, we can text it, whatever we wanna do. Um, and save it to Service Titan if you're on Service Titan, but that's the whole concept behind this uh, this whole report here, and it makes it way way faster. A typical report will take you about a uh, about a half hour, and I just did a video on this showing that. So, and that, and that's with the video time, which takes a little bit of time on its own. And again, you can use tools, fuel piece, you can use Testo, you can use Tech, you can use. A lot of different tools all at the same time to make this thing work and it's it's really quite slick and it makes the whole process really fast because it's dynamic and you're making all the measurements at once. Great with a blue flame analyzer for the combustion analysis side, but uh, hopefully this gets you guys through. If you've got any questions or comments, please uh, ask and we'd be glad to answer them. Again, this is Jim with Better Quick. Thanks a lot.